Almost any day of the week you will see Mihai Tijani cruising the waters of the Tista River near his home, searching for a sign of life. But of course he finds nothing and probably won't for years to come, because the river is dead, killed by a torrent of cyanide and heavy metals. Europe's worst ecological disaster since Chernobyl, the poisoning of rivers in Romania and Hungary, was caused by the accidental release of cyanide, a toxic waste from a gold mine. Now you're in Canada, flying over the Mount Polly mine disaster. Another gold mining accident released the toxic sludge byproduct of open pit gold mining. The containment area, called a tailings pond, collapsed, sending massive amounts of heavy metal poisons into the local environment. Now investors want to put an open pit gold mine into rural Buckingham County, Virginia. Residents have reason to expect the worst. My garden thrives on the same fresh, clean well water that we use to drink, wash, and cook. Now all this is being threatened. History teaches that if open pit gold mining is permitted within 50 miles of my home here in Virginia, the aquifer that supplies our wells will ultimately become contaminated. The water will become dangerous. My flowers won't bloom, vegetables won't grow, my neighbor's farm animals will get sick. This is about water, life, and death here in Buckingham. Open pit gold mining begins with excavation. The crushed rock is soaked in a highly poisonous chemical to extract tiny amounts of gold. Massive amounts of toxic waste is corralled in outdoor dams. For a while, the dams hold and the danger to surrounding communities and their water is contained until there is an accident and the protection system fails. Despite the efforts of industry and government, highly toxic chemicals used to extract traces of gold from tons of rock and their poisonous byproducts eventually find their way into the surrounding aquifer. If that happened here in Buckingham, Virginia, the poison from the gold mine would enter the James River, putting the health of millions of Virginians at unnecessary risk. From our homes in Buckingham, all the way to the state capital of Richmond and into the Chesapeake Bay. My name is Charles. <laughs> hey, my name's Lily. Hey, my name's Cora. These are some of the people of rural Buckingham, an hour south of Charlottesville, population about 17,000. They live near the proposed site of what would be the first modern gold mine in Virginia and its implicit threat to their water. We will have to vacate because it's an underground water source. That's our only water. Water is life. Everybody in this area has well water, um, and the chemicals that they use causes um, acid mine runoff. It causes uh, all of these chemicals to just pollute the groundwater, to pollute the streams and the rivers, um, and it makes it unlivable. It never gets old watching the sun rise over this mine. Every day, it's a reminder of the bright future and the golden opportunity lying ahead and below. This is official public relations video from the company that owns the open pit gold mine in South Carolina, a model, we are told, for the mine proposed for Virginia. That is not reassuring to people who live near the Virginia gold exploration area. The global company that owns the South Carolina mine promised it would be a good environmental neighbor, but it has failed in ways that are frightening. The mine failed to control the release of toxic mercury into the air and thallium, a component of rat poison. The company did not properly inform the state government of the accidental releases of the poisons. All of that makes some experts wonder what else might be wrong with the way the mine operates. 
It was less than three years ago in Brumadinho, a small town in Brazil, that another big mining company reassured its neighbors that they had nothing to fear. Then the dam containing tons of mine sludge collapsed. That collapse sent this tidal wave, a preventable nightmare, racing downhill, literally burying 300 innocent people. Uh, it's about 10 or 12 meters from reject. 10 or 12 meters of, of, yes. of, of sludge, toxic waste. Yes. The sludge continued onwards, taking out a hostel and a bridge, and snaking its way through farmland and villages. When I remember that I saw those trees falling there, passing the trees and the trees falling, and the people all down below, because we knew everyone there, everyone there. A woman died there, like on the side of the pillar. Parts of Brumadinho look like a modern-day Pompeii. Not only is there that threat, the gold mine proposed for our part of Virginia would also violate core principles of environmental justice. It would threaten the homes and the livelihoods of African-American people whose relatives were enslaved here in Buckingham County. John Laurie's freedmen ancestors were able to acquire some of the land after the Civil War. Like many other black land owners, Laurie sees the proposed gold mine as yet another example of encroaching systemic racism. They pick on the blacks, people of color, poor communities. Meanwhile, members of this historic black church expect nothing but trouble from the gold mine. In fact, they say they've had some already during the exploration stage. My name is Mary Harper. I am one of the trustees here at Von Minister Baptist Church. I am deeply concerned about the devastation of digging for gold. It's, it's, it's ruining our neighborhood. The water, wells drying up, where would we go if we, if we was to be pushed off our land? Where would we go? We have nowhere else to go, but this is our home and this is where we want to remain. This is my father, Willie Perkins Sr. This is my mother, Dorothy Perkins. This is my grandmother, Ms. Lena Perkins. We don't want our cemetery to be disturbed. If we move, what would happen? If we lost our land because of this gold mine, what would happen to our cemetery? And, and we are uh, just a small group of people that always getting pushed around or uh, trying to get pushed because of our color of our skin. And we are not, you know, accepting the way things are. The Reverend Ernie Seaver Moore agrees with Deacon Perkins. Moore is the executive director of Yogaville the Global Yoga Teaching Center in Buckingham County. Every year before the pandemic, more than 7,000 students flocked to Yogaville. Yogaville is one of the largest employers of the county when there's no pandemic. It's about 1,000 acres, has 100 private homes, with more under construction. Yogaville strongly opposes the gold mine project. Having a gold mine in a residential area is uh, is astounding. <laughs> it's going to ruin the water table for all these hundreds of uh, homes in this area. Not just Yogaville, but all the wonderful neighbors all around that area. Then what are you going to do? You're going to have to pipe water here for millions. It's going to cost millions and millions of dollars to pipe water to all these homes out here. It's just not a good idea. Well, where they want to have this scope and pick gold mining is uphill. It's about, the elevation is up on top of this road on the end. We're down on the lower end here. We're about 150 feet elevation wise, lower than where the gold mining would happen. Well, as you see, the wells around here are about 200 feet deep on average. Uh, you're gonna, they, these pits are much deeper than that. And you're gonna interact with all that. You're gonna disturb the water aquifer. 
uh, that all these creeks, everything from that re, that area, drains downhill into the James River. So whether it be Sycamore Creek or these unnamed creeks and tributaries, they all drain into the James River. It's all going to get impacted by the tailings and all that that's going to come out of this mine. My name's Denise Williams. I'm a physician. I've lived in the Buckingham County, Southern Albemarle area for 38 years, and I practice medicine here for over 25. The pollution from gold mines includes many uh, toxic chemicals such as mercury, uh, cyanide, arsenic. Uh, these chemicals get into the soil, groundwater, streams and rivers, not only right near the mine, but extending many miles beyond the mine. These chemicals get into the food chain through plants, fish, other animals, and eventually, unfortunately, to us. They can cause cancer, diseases of the brain, the, the liver, and the kidneys. But most concerning is the effect these elements have on pregnant women, their fetuses, and children whose brains are developing. Uh, these elements, especially arsenic, mercury and lead have been shown to cause low birth weight, birth defects, preterm birth, and neurologic developmental problems that can lead to low IQ and learning disabilities. These chemicals will stay around long after the mine closes and continue to cause disease. I was a professor of geology for over 30 years. This is Dr. Stephen Emmerman, the mining expert the industry fears. There is no gold mining without environmental pollution. Who decided that Buckingham County should be the sacrifice zone so that investors can stack up more gold bullion? Watch the video of the mine disaster in Brazil a few times. That's the future of Buckingham County. My name is Chad Oba. I am a co-founder and the president of Friends of Buckingham. I live here in the Union Hill neighborhood about five miles from the gold exploration area. Uh, we share the same aquifer here, so if their water is poisoned by a gold mine, ours will be too. So we are sharing the same fate, and we've done this before, and we know how to fight. For almost six years, the little nonprofit organization we founded, Friends of Buckingham, helped organize the determined opposition to a multi-billion dollar fracked gas pipeline project which threatened our health and safety. With our friends and allies in the climate and environmental justice movement, we surprised the big money interest and we won. Today it's the gold mining people who think they're going to roll over us simple country folk. They're blowing smoke onto our local officials while telling them that it's sunshine. They're saying that their approach to mining would not hurt the environment. This is the same playbook of nonsense that we heard from the pipeline people. It is untrue and it is misleading. This is the same as it is with the gold mine. We will not stand by and allow them to devastate our land and poison our water while they and their investors get rich. This is a moral issue. It is a matter of sustaining life, of human rights. We will fight this. Please join us.